Symposium. My name is Alejandra Maldonado, and I'm a member of this year's organizing committee. We have a great lineup, great lineup of speakers for you today. This year's topic is Environments and Flux, Responses Across the Ecological Hierarchy. Before we proceed with opening our remarks, we would like to thank all of the departments and our generous donors that helped make this event possible. And now, with great pleasure, I would like to introduce to you Dr. Glenn Lane, the Vice President for Research for our opening remarks. Thank you, Alejandra. Howdy. Howdy. So, th this is what we call prepared remarks. You hear about that on uh, TV. So, I'm going to say these and maybe I'll interject a little bit with some, uh, some comments. So, the truth is, I'm very poorly educated in ecology. Maybe I can actually learn something here. So, it's my honor to welcome you and to say a few words about the 15th Annual Ecological Integration Symposium. The symposium is a result of the dedication and hard work of our students who serve as the organizing committee for this symposium. This group has one mission, to foster an integrative approach to ecology within our university and culture, the local community, and the a and system at large. True to its mission, this organization represents no one department or college at our university. Its membership is uh, diverse and interdisciplinary by design. In addition to organizing this symposium, each student is currently working on a graduate degree, doctorate, or master's. And I'd like to recognize uh, the uh, organizing committee. So if you're here in the room, please stand when I call your name and we'll hold some applause and then uh, let them know how much we appreciate putting on this presentation. And if I uh, pronounce your name incorrectly, you can scold me later. So, uh, Josephine Antwi. Pablo de Clos. Symposium brings us together 
since its first, it first started in 2000, the organization's uh, work has primarily taken the form of this symposium, which focuses on current research in integrative uh, ecology. Each year, this uh, symposium attracts a number of renowned scientists to speak about ecology, evolutionary biology, and conservation. This year is absolutely no different. The theme is uh, environments in flux, responses across the ecological hierarchy. Uh, four speakers have been uh, chosen today and agreed uh, to be, uh, present our plenary sessions. And uh, I'll say a bit about each of those and then we can uh, show our appreciation. Dr. Thomas Lovejoy holds the Biodiversity Chair at the Heinz Center for Science, Economics, and uh, the Environment at George Mason University. He's an ecologist who's worked in the Brazilian Amazon since 1965. Let's see, anybody born before that year? <laughs> um, and his uh, work is uh, focused where science meets uh, environmental policy. And Dr. Brian Bowen, uh, he's a research professor at the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology at the University of Hawaii. And Dr. Bowen has conducted uh, globe-standing genetic surveys of reef fishes, uh, marine turtles, sharks, bonefish, anchovies, uh, sardines, shrimp, and seabirds. So he's obviously been around for a bit as well. Dr. Andrew Hendry is an associate professor at the uh, Red Path Museum in the Department of Biology at McGill. I can tell you that the uh, Red Path Museum is the oldest, or one of the oldest museums in Canada, a uh, very prestigious uh, institution. And uh, his research uh, includes uh, eco-evolutionary dynamics, specifically how ecological changes influ influence uh, evolu evolutionary dynamics. And Dr. David Resnick, an evolutionary biologist and professor of biology at the University of California, Riverside who specializes in the empirical study of adaptation. Dr. Resnick uh, studies the uh, process of evolution by natural selection from an experimental perspective and then by testing evolutionary theory in natural populations. So please join me in uh, welcoming these outstanding symposium speakers. So this symposium offers an opportunity for students to present their research uh, focused on ecology, evolutionary biology, and uh, environmental science. And student posters and presentations will be held on uh, Saturday from 9 to 4. We have a large number of uh, student presenters this year. We encourage you to uh, attend their uh, poster presentations. Also, I want to take a minute to thank all of the sponsors who were uh, supporting this symposium. This event is solely funded by donations from a variety of departments and organizations. So thanks to all of them for supporting the research enterprise at Texas A&M University. And on behalf of uh, Texas A&M University and the Division of Research, uh, welcome to this 15th uh, Ecological Integration Symposium. And so now I'm going to uh, insert, uh, since I'm poorly educated in ecology uh, and the environment, I am going to insert one personal comment. So, my uh, personal specialty these days uh, is the uh, uh, biological weapons and the uh, uh, ensuring that they are used. And so, recently, I had an opportunity to travel a bit in this capacity, and I was in uh, uh, Kenya recently, and uh, there was a uh, a lull in the meetings I had with the Centers for Disease Control. And I was able to sneak out of Kenya across the border into Rwanda and across the country to the border with the Democratic Republic of Congo, which is uh, not a friendly place for, uh, <laughs> for people from the United States. And uh, but when you get to the border, there's a volcano there, and you can uh, climb the volcano. It's uh, Mount Sabinia, if anybody's been there before. But when you get up near the top into the uh, rainforest, you come across the most interesting population of mountain gorillas in their natural habitat. So that's my, uh, my story about, um, and, and, and you have to pay a fee actually in order to do this, and then the money is used to provide armed guards to protect the gorillas from uh, cross-border incursions from, from the Congo. So, uh, it was most impressive to see these animals in, in their natural habitat. 
Now, I'm a bit of a runner, uh, <clears throat> but by the time I got to the top of the volcano, the, uh, the, the local guy that I had didn't seem to be having a problem, but I almost couldn't see straight because of oxygen uh, deprivation. Uh, folks, for those uh, who haven't been to College Station before, I also want to say welcome to Aggie Hill. Thank you.